My name's Derek Shuttle. I'm really pleased to be here. I'm going to go off script for a second and ask for audience participation. Mukesh doesn't know I'm about to do this, so if he gets nervous, just bear with him. Um, little known fact, uh, today is Mukesh's birthday. So, so, okay, hold on, hold on. So if I can ask on three, on one, two, three, we're going to say happy birthday, Mukesh, okay? All right. One, two, three. There we go. Excellent. Hey, Dave. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And thank you. <laughs> okay, so Mukesh, we all know, um, and we've heard this morning about disruption, sure. right? How data is changing the game. And I think that the graph that Tom Friedman showed us was human adaptability is like this, but rate and pace is accelerating. So you're in the media business. You're dealing with clients all the time. They're struggling with data and how to apply that to their businesses so that they can provide right content, right time, right screen, so that my 10-year-old daughter gets bubble guppies or you know, whatever it may be. Sure. So tell us first about RSG Media, and then let's talk disruption. Sure. So the firm is uh, about 30 years old, and for the past 30 years old, uh, and for the past 30 years, we have been trying to, uh, to kind of optimize revenues for our, for our different clients worldwide. And we do it in two very simple ways. Uh, one is to optimize either the kind of content inventory or the ad sales inventory. So if you think of that, right, the business that you're in, you have ultimately a partnership with your clients. Yes. They're looking at lots of data. They're trying to make sense of it. And as the media industry is fragmented, right, it used to be, what, Three networks, only a few choices. What does that landscape look like today? Sure. So just a few short years ago, you know, there was ABC, there was CBS, and there was NBC, and there was one TV. And now we have broadcast networks, we have cable networks, we have uh, kind of digital networks, we have the internet, we have smartphones. And that leads to many, many, many more choices. And, and this has uh, been actually been kind of borne out by the stats. So TV viewership this year is down about 8% in the 18 to 47 age group. And as we go younger, it is down about 20%. So at the 22, say, 35 age group, uh, uh, it is down 20%. And for the very first time ever, Dennis, live sports is down. The, the kind of NFL is down in, in terms of ratings for the very first time. That is astounding. Yeah, so those ratings are down. Those are daunting statistics. So if you're sitting at one of those media companies that has this content and you're looking at the existing, I'll say, technologies that you can use, they're asking, how do I address this, right? How, how do I start looking at data sources to inform decisions so I can capture all that fragmentation? So talk to us in detail, but how are they handling this shift? How are they going to remain viable with all this disruption? So the news actually is uh, not all bad. Folks are, do, uh, folks are watching content, and it's about five hours a day, and it's about, that's about, uh, about 150 hours a month. And if you are a large media company, you can do the math. So the trick actually now is to give the audience what they want, how they want it, and when they, uh, and when they want it. And, uh, about two, uh, and about two days ago, uh, Time Warner did a deal with AT&T. This is a quote and quote from Jeff Bukas, the CEO of Time Warner. This was precisely his kind of rationale for doing the deal with, uh, with AT&T. And, and this just goes to show that if you're not hitting the mark, someone else will. And that's an $85 billion transaction. So that's a pretty big bet. That's a big reaction yeah. to ultimately trying to manage how to get content to the right place at the right time. So massive disruption, right? General theme for us today. So specifically, let's talk about RSG Media and what you're doing to help your clients. Okay. So what we are doing in a, in a nutshell is trying, to in, uh, is trying to get them to engage with their kind of clients better. And uh, this, of course, kind of translates into 
trying to kind of optimize their content inventory, trying to optimize their kind of ad sales inventory, and uh, trying to uh, have them spend less on marketing. And, and if you can think of a uh, kind of orange, all we are trying to do is to kind of uh, get the most juice out of this orange to the tune of $50 million last year for, say, one of our clients. So $50 million, not a small number, big impact. I like the squeezing the juice out of the orange. Huge ROI. Huge ROI. So, and also, I think, I think an impressive list, right? Working with real companies with real scale, with lots of data, that's fragmenting. So I understand that those revenue gains were driven in large part by your investment in data and analytics yeah. and thinking differently uh, about how to process and share and inform using data and analytics. Yes. So, in summary, our kind of secret sauce is, uh, is smart data. And what that translates into, we have at present about 12 apps which are running under the Media Mantra platform. And, and there's just so much data spewing out from our cell phones, from our TVs, and, uh, and it's really, really tough for our kind of clients to, to kind of organize it, sift through it, combine it, kind of cleanse it, and then use it to actually predict and to kind of prescribe. How do you start a show? How, how do you target a kind of ad spot to a particular kind of viewer? And, uh, and how much do you spend on marketing? So the end result is much more revenue for, uh, for our clients and a very happy and, uh, and an engaged audience, and, and which means Derek you, me, and kind of all of us in this room. So that means I think it's we get Bravo and Lifetime at the right time. Right? <laughs> so with the graphic above, what is it that we're actually seeing? How is it that we're able to interpret? Okay. So these are just two small charts, uh, and this is what we do day to day. It sounds overwhelming, but it's pretty simple, and, and this is what we call a kind of audience flow. This shows where the audience is coming from one show to, to our show, how much time they're spending there, and then where are they going from here to the next one. And, uh, and then if we go to the next slide, I mean, what it's basically showing, it's a heat map. Who's watching our show? How much time are they spending on, on it? And what are their kind of competitive choices to kind of take a look at? So one thing we've talked about today, and you heard Rob mention it, is this is not just about technology. It's also about skills and transformation. So talk to us about how are you building these solutions for your clients? Okay, so Derek, as you know, we have been working with your team, and, uh, and we're really bringing kind of smart data to life on the, on the IBM Watson data platform. And if you see this, what I call a very pretty lady, this is uh, really 50 different uh, kind of data sources, and we are tracking them minute by minute, and sometimes at a 15 to say 30 seconds kind of, uh, kind of interval. And the goal for us is to give a bird's eye view to each and every one of our clients as to how they, of how their content is being kind of consumed across different platforms. So that's obviously a pretty dynamic environment, right? So yes. what's critical? What are some of the key things that you have to have if you think about delivering across all of that diversity in a timely manner for such demanding clients? Yes. So four things. Number one. We have to get all of our data into one place, which is the IBM Watson data platform. Then we need to use Spark to, to be able to kind of process it. And then, most and uh, uh, kind of most importantly, be, be able to show all of this information to our clients in kind of almost real time. What happens if they move a show from here to there? What happens if they move an ad from here to there? Should it be on linear? Should it be on kind of digital? And, uh, and this kind of, uh, uh, and kind of all of this kind of translates into helping them make the kind of right choices for their business at the speed and the cost of the cloud. So that sounds pretty familiar, not just obviously to the media and entertainment business, but I imagine everyone in this room all of us are struggling with, I think, what McKesh and RSJ Media are delivering on. And this, I think, is an incredible example. 
and representative of the mission that we're on with the IBM Watson data platform. We need to provide a single place where companies can tap into vast amounts of data, choose from the best analytic capabilities that, you know, for the job at the right time, and then make the data accessible. We have to make the data accessible in a way that teams can collaborate together. So they're not in isolation, but they're working together. All with a fast on-ramp, cost effectiveness, predictability, and scalability of the cloud. And even though we have been doing it for the past 30 years, I truly, genuinely believe this is, the, uh, this is actually the start of a new era, Derek, for you and me and for kind of all of us. Thank you very much. Um, Mukesh, thank you so much. Thank you for joining us. So first, I want to thank everyone for uh, wishing Mukesh a happy birthday. And second, I, I hope you take away from that discussion that what RSG Media is doing for media entertainment, I think all of us need to think about our respective industries, about how we need to think differently about data, providing access, and providing a team environment. 